Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful morning here in central Idaho. I camped here last night. I drove, I think I'm about two and a half or three hours from home. And then parked here, camped here for the night. I just woke up, so I'm looking and sounding a little bit crusty here this morning, but I'm excited for the day's adventures. I'm excited for the next few days of adventures. I think all of this trip, all of these next couple of days are gonna be in this one video. First thing today, I'm gonna to head into town. I'm about 45 minutes or an hour from Stanley, which is kind of the, the outdoor recreation capital of this part of Idaho, beautifully situated little town at the foot of the mountains. And uh, today, the focus of today is gonna be to meet up with a couple other people, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but for now, let's get in the car, in the Land Cruiser, and drive on into town. The very important first stop of the day is the Stanley Baking Company. Gonna get some uh, some little treats to start off the day here. And look at this haul. So I'm gonna have this for breakfast right now. This is a bacon and brie croissant. Then we have a chocolate croissant, a cinnamon roll, and a blueberry scone. I'm gonna share these with my new friends, so I'm gonna be meeting in about 15 minutes. This is the view from town here. Look at these amazing mountains. These are the Sawtooths and make a mental bookmark about this mountain right in the middle here, the one that looks the tallest, because I think I'm going to be climbing that one tomorrow. The one just to the left of it, just behind it, that looks smaller, is actually the highest in the entire mountain range. But we'll talk more about these later. For now, I'm going to head on about five or ten minutes out of town here to meet up with, uh, with today's featured guests. All right, guys, I'm now at an undisclosed location. I've been sworn to secrecy. I cannot reveal the location of this campsite, but we're close to the Sawtooth Mountains. It's a beautiful spot. I wish I could show you the view here, but uh, we'll see more of this of these uh, beautiful mountains later on in the video here. But I am with Brian. Hi there. This is uh, Brian from Cheap RV Living. We met several months ago at the RTR yep. in, in Arizona, the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, which is put on by, uh, by Bob Wells from Cheap RV Living, and you work with Bob. I do. Now, on the channel. I do indeed. So yeah, so I'm basically doing some video content. Bob produces so many videos and he has worked his butt off over the years just trying to put out all this content for people. Uh, so I was brought on board just to help him out, shoot some videos, do some tours, uh, which is what we did today. We did a little tour exactly. of your vehicle and yep. that was awesome. So that, that's basically why, that was the, the reason for this trip. That's why I came here. We've been talking for several weeks now trying to figure out where and when to meet and uh, this lined up for both of us. Uh, Brian has some work to do today, so yep. uh, hopefully we can work. We can uh, hang out more in the future and go on adventures together. But uh, as for now, uh, we'll say goodbye to Brian. Brian, thank you for showing me uh, or for showing the world my rig here. Um, be on the lookout for that video, uh, the video tour of my Land Cruiser here, sometime in the next six months or so. I don't know. We'll you know, stay tuned to the channel here, and I'll I'll post links or I'll talk about it in the future, and uh, we can share that with more people. That sounds good. The world. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to do now. Uh, we'll let Brian get uh, get back to work here. And I think I'm going to go head into the mountains somewhere. So I'll see you guys wherever I turn up next. Well, it's now 7.30 p.m. I decided to change up my plans. I spent the day fishing. I fished all day today. Had a great time. Uh, but let me show you my campsite here. I know this video is starting off kind of disjointed, but I promise it'll get better starting tomorrow morning. Awesome campsite here right along the creek. There's someone else camped. I don't know if you can see them kind of up on that ridge there right in the middle. They've got a van up there, I think. Pretty spot. Mountains in, uh, in a couple different directions here. 
really beautiful country. In my mind, I'm constructing this video. I'm going through this whole video, even the things that haven't happened yet. And uh, everything that's been in this video until now is part one or act one. Act two starts in the morning and it's gonna be really spectacular. Act three starts in a few days and that's gonna be equally amazing. So be sure to stay tuned here. I have some work to do tonight. And by work, I mean I've got some stuff to get ready for act two in the morning. So I'm gonna go do that, I'm gonna have some dinner, then I'll see you guys bright and early, probably right at daybreak, right at the break of dawn, somewhere over here in the mountains. The curtain opens on act two. Our protagonist finds himself very tired. It's early, guys. It's, uh, it's 6.14. I woke up at five and uh, I'm still kind of in the process of, of waking up here. You know, people ask me if I'm afraid of bears or mountain lions or snakes or scorpions or I'm afraid of being alone, if I'm afraid of, you know, crazy people. What if someone attacks me, you know? The thing that I'm most worried about, the number one thing that I'm worried about on these trips is hitting a freaking deer in my car. That is what keeps me up at night. Or, you know, an elk or a moose or even a cow or, you know, whatever. But usually it's deer that I'm most worried about. And I almost hit deer almost every time I drive in the dark. It didn't happen this morning, luckily, but I was driving slow on the highway getting here. There was no traffic, so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take it easy. I'm not in any rush. I do not want to hit a deer going 70 miles an hour in my new car. The weather this morning is iffy. You can see the mountains up ahead. It rained last night and the forecast calls for rain this morning, but it should clear up as the day goes on. Fingers crossed. I've got about four miles of relatively moderate hiking here to start off with, and then things get a little bit more intense and a little bit more interesting. I'm at the wilderness area boundary now, and everyone entering the wilderness area needs a permit. They're free. Even if you're just on a, a day hike, you need a permit here. Right, we're legal. So for the past almost hour and a half and almost four miles, I've been hiking up this ridge here. And uh, my destination is this mountain right here, which is essentially, I mean, if you keep going up the ridge, you go up to the top of that mountain. This mountain, or is it over here? That is the highest mountain in this mountain range. It's called Thompson Peak. It's about 10,600 something. And then this one, the one that I'm going up, is called Williams Peak. It is the sixth highest mountain in this mountain range. Remember yesterday when I said to make a mental bookmark of that one mountain? That's Williams Peak. That's what I'm hiking up today. And I'm hiking up that instead of the highest, which I've never done before, because it's Saturday and there are going to be a lot of people out hiking. Uh, probably a little bit less than normal, fewer people than normal, but I mean it's still a Saturday in August, and so I thought that its neighbor, the sixth highest in the mountain range, which is arguably more impressive to look at from Stanley, from town, would be a good, a good destination for the day. So that's where I'm headed. And now a little bit beyond where I just was, the trail continues this way, up toward Thompson Peak, which is looking spectacular. There are waterfalls in here, here, and over here, and uh, it's just incredible. But I'm leaving the trail. Uh, there's no trail up the mountain that I'm going up. You just go up. And so I'm gonna leave the trail and go through this stuff, which I'm sure is still wet. And so it's gonna make my pants and shoes soaking wet. Not looking forward to that.
You know, I'm, I'm kind of having a hard time believing what I'm seeing here. This is so spectacular. What a mountain range. The sun is coming out a little bit, peeking out from behind the clouds. I haven't seen anyone else. And I can't really see the mountain I'm going up either. I can kind of see the point of it, but that's fine with me. The view of Thompson over here is just <laughs> incredible. Looks like the Tetons. I'm very much reminded of the Tetons. The color of the rock is very reminiscent of the Tetons. A kind of grayish golden rock. It is beautiful. And I'm above the clouds here a little bit. There's a nice little cloud in the valley below me. What a place, what a mountain range. This is definitely one of the great mountain ranges of the United States. And I'm sad that I haven't done more here, but that'll change. I've got a pretty good look at the way ahead of me now. I'm gonna move now up to the ridge top proper, to the actual top of the ridge, or at least in that area. I'll probably skirt these points by going around them to the left. And this is the thing that I'm going up. This is Williams Peak. Looks pretty impossible. Amazing. I've also got a good view of the lake in this basin now. I think that's a popular backpacking destination and you can see why. What a place. Well, the going here isn't super difficult. Um, you kind of have to pick your way through the, the rubble and the cliffs here. It's a little bit tedious, and I think it's going to get even more tedious as I have to skirt around cliffs in that upper section, but no complaints. Beautiful place. This is looking down the East Ridge. This is the way I came. And I look at the beautiful rays of light coming through the clouds there. And then this over here is Stanley, the little town of Stanley. Population like 100. They have way more visitors than residents. I would live there if I could. This is an incredible area for outdoor recreation. The hiking is amazing, the fishing is amazing. Tons of lakes. And speaking of lakes, there's a really beautiful one right below me here that I just got my first glimpse of. And uh, yeah, I'm just walking, working my way up, up the ridge, slowly but surely. I'm really trying here to keep my footing on solid rock and avoid, you know, avoid this stuff and try to find the little bits of solid footing, solid handholds, and uh, avoid all this nastiness, all this two steps up, one step down stuff. So far, so good. I read that there are mountain goats up here. I wonder if this is mountain goat fur. Yeah, there's more of that stuff right here. I think that's what it is. Don't know what else it would be. Check this out. I'm high enough now that I can see over this uh, kind of 
sub ridge that's been off to my left for a while, right next to Thompson Peak. Look at these mountains beyond. Beautiful. I think I see the summit. I think that's it over there. First look at the summit proper. Got lots of rocky ridge to traverse between here and there. Whew. This little aluminum pipe here marks the summit. There's a little summit register in this blue bottle. And I just signed it and uh, a few people have climbed it in the last month. I'm the first one uh, in the last couple of weeks to do it. Just look at this incredible place. I mean, just row upon row upon row upon row of jagged, just incredibly impressive rocky peaks. And again, this is Thompson. This is the highest in the mountain range. And then looking to the north, we've got all this, just wide open glacially carved basins, glacially scoured. Crazy, what a crazy place. I love it. This is the way I came up. I came up on this ridge and you can't see the lower part, but that was something. That was, that was a lot of work. But wow, was that worth it. Amazing, amazing, amazing place. It took me five hours and 17 minutes to get here. 4,000 feet of elevation gain, 5.39 miles. I'm feeling pretty good. Um, and I, I still have a lot of daylight left. It is 11.28 in the morning. I kind of want to keep going. I kind of want to go climb Thompson. I don't know if I'm up for it. What I think I'm gonna do is keep going along this ridge. I'm gonna traverse this ridge. So, this is Thompson over here. I'm gonna keep going along the ridge of this mountain of Williams Peak. And I'm gonna to go to the saddle between Williams and Thompson. From there, we'll see how I feel. The weather is holding, still some clouds, but again, no rain, no thunder, no lightning. A little bit of wind, but not too bad. Anyway, let's climb another one, shall we? That was a mountain goat.
maybe I don't want to walk down this chute here. Maybe I'll stick to the rock on the side. Well, that was brutal, but at least it was over pretty quick. I came down this chute right here. The summit is over here somewhere. Can't really tell where it is from here. I'm now in this beautiful bowl, just completely surrounded by mountains here. This is Thompson Peak. I was debating on the hike down here, on the slog down here. Oh, by the way, here's a nice little waterfall. I was debating whether or not I wanted to do it. Do I want to go up the second mountain. And as I was coming down, the answer was decidedly no. I was thinking this is miserable, uh, this is brutal, I don't want to be here, I, I want to be back in my car, I want a hamburger. And then I got down here, and then I ate a little bit, had some more jerky and pecans, and had a little biscuit bar, drank some water, emptied the rocks from my shoes, and I thought, you know what? I'm up here, it's still early in the day, let's do it. So, I am going to hike up mountain number two today. I'm not going to film very much of it, just little bits and pieces here. You already saw me climb one mountain here in, in detail. You don't need to see me climb another. But uh, yeah, I'll just give you occasional little snapshots so you can see what the scene is like. I'll meet back up with you on top. Well, as I thought, there is apparently at least one, probably two or three snow patches that I need to traverse. You can see some people finishing up the traverse right there. Pretty little pond right here, by the way. Doesn't look bad. There are definitely steps kicked in there already. So if I take my time and go slowly, I'll be okay. And then I have to scramble up this after that. And then that will get me up uh, I'm not entirely sure where. Maybe close to the saddle up there? I'm not sure. I grabbed a little dagger-shaped rock to use in place of an ice axe in case I slip here. Because if I slip, I want to be able to stop myself before I run into the rocks down there. And with this, I can self-arrest, which is normally what you want to do with an ice axe. But again, I do not have an ice axe with me today. The snow is decently soft, that's good. It's not like ice. Okay. Rock feels good. All right, guys, I'm about two or 300 feet below the summit. I need to scramble up this gully to the top. It's unpleasant, but such is mountain climbing a lot of the time. And here is the actual tippy top, the actual summit. Got a few other people up there. Amazing views. This is the mountain that I climbed earlier. Williams Peak looks much more impressive from here than it did at the base of it. This is that long chute that I somehow managed to escape down and then just beautiful lakes in every direction. This is Redfish Lake, probably the most famous lake in Idaho. Just rock, shattered rock in every direction. All right, let's go tag the summit. What a view, guys. What a day, what a beautiful place. Whew. Highest mountain in the range. 
and what a range. And from here I can see most of the route that I've taken today. So again, this is Redfish Lake. I started hiking over here, like the, the trailhead is on the side of Redfish Lake. And then I went uh, basically along this ridge right here, and then up this ridge right here to the top of Williams Peak right there, and then down to over in this area, kind of by that unnamed lake down there, and then around the mountain over there, and then over this way and up to the top. I don't know if it's this little point right here or this one where I'm standing that's the top. The survey marker, the benchmark plate is over there, uh, but this one looks a little bit higher, so I went to both of them just to be safe. I'm now gonna eat my celebratory summit Reese's that I forgot to eat on the other mountain. I forgot I had it. And then I'm gonna stop filming and retrace my steps and get on out of here. And I'll meet back up with you guys sometime today, maybe, or maybe in a couple days. I'm not sure. But uh, I want you to, you know, like earlier in this video, I said, make a mental note of that mountain over there. I want you to make a mental note of these mountains across from me now. These over here to the east are the White Clouds, another beautiful Idaho mountain range. Just keep those in the back of your mind and I'll see you guys later. And now several hours later, I've found a campsite. Pretty spot, wide open. There are wildflowers out in this little meadow here and you can see some of the, the mountains out there. I'm happy. And there's even a pretty little creek right next to camp. I haven't yet calculated the stats from today's adventure. I don't know how long I was hiking for or the distance or the elevation gain. I'll compute all of that while I'm editing and I'll put that on the screen here. And I'm especially curious about the calories that I burned because I just went into town into Stanley and got just a gigantic burger uh, with fries. Then I got an ice cream bar too and I'm still hungry. I still feel like I'm at a calorie deficit for the day. So long day. Awesome day though. Incredible scenery, world-class scenery, world-class mountains up there. I loved it. And that'll bring act two to a close. I think tonight I'm just gonna relax uh, a little bit more and then tomorrow's gonna be a rest day. And then I'll meet back up with you guys for the start of act three in a couple days. So stay tuned, I'll see you then. Welcome to act three. Are you guys ready to drive the highest road in Idaho? I know I am. Let's do this. Well, I just crashed the drone. Uh, I don't know why the obstacle avoidance on it didn't work as it was tracking the car. That's kind of weird. Um, not sure where it is. I think I can, maybe I can have it start beeping. Let me go grab the controller and figure out where it was when it crashed. But anyway, <laughs> this place is amazing. This is called Railroad Ridge. It is the highest road in Idaho. And uh, it's just spectacular up here, above tree line with views of the high peaks. Just unbelievable scenery. So these are the white clouds. Remember when I said a couple days ago to remember these mountains? These are the white cloud mountains. Most of the, the highest parts of this are wilderness areas. So all of this, this is all wilderness. 
from this road, you can drive right up to the edge of the wilderness. It's, it's amazing. Anyway, let's go find the drone. Oh, that didn't take too long. It's right here. I, I heard the noise of the, um, the fan cooling it. <laughs> I think, I think it's still flyable. I don't think anything broke on it. Okay, let's try it. Let's try to fly it again. This might be the most spectacular place I've ever driven to. I can't believe you're allowed to drive here, that it's possible to drive here. Just unbelievable scenery. And I'm the only one up here. This is wild. I think I already said, right, that this is called Railroad Ridge. This kind of broad ridge that I've been driving up is Railroad Ridge. And to put the, the elevation here in perspective, so I'm at 10,400 feet. Again, highest road in Idaho that I know of. If you know of a higher one, let me know. I'll go drive it. To put that into perspective, those mountains that I climbed a couple days ago in the Sawtooths, this is only about 200 feet lower than that. These mountains here are much higher than the Sawtooths. Crazy. Just an amazing, amazing place. You can probably tell there's some smoke in the area from wildfires. I can definitely smell it. I can smell the smoke. Uh, but the, luckily the, the mountain views are actually pretty clear. It's mostly in this direction behind me that the smoke is and the wind is blowing that way, so. That's lucky. Uh, the actual end of the road is down in this little little notch right here. And so all of this is in the wilderness area. I think I might even be standing in the wilderness area also. I'm not gonna climb these mountains or anything, but I think I am going to go climb this one. I'm gonna go hike up this one. It shouldn't be too, too bad. It shouldn't take too, too long. And then it'll open up the views of what's on the other side, which I'm very interested in seeing. And it took, by the way, roughly an hour to get here, maybe a little bit less to get to this point from where the, the Railroad Ridge Road starts. It is a high clearance road. I would not drive this road in a Subaru or a RAV4 or anything like that. I'm really happy I had the clearance of the Land Cruiser. I don't think you need four wheel drive, but high clearance is definitely necessary. I'm almost at the top, but as I continue further along the ridgeline, I'm going to lose sight of the Land Cruiser. I wanted to show it to you right there, right in the middle, all by itself off in the distance. And this ridge, this is a railroad ridge. And the road comes up from down here from this valley and goes up to the top here and then over this way. Apparently there's no limit to amazing vistas you can have in one video. This is looking back the way I came. The summit is actually over here, but the views aren't as good from the summit. This is looking down onto the, the view we had from the top of Railroad Ridge. So this big thing right here, this amazing wall here is called the Chinese wall, which makes sense. And then we've got just crazy rock here. Look at this stuff. This is a geologist's dream right here. 
more lakes up in this high basin here. This would be an awesome place to camp. I mean, it's really not that far from where I parked, just you know, scramble on down the ridge to one of these lakes. That'd be an amazing campsite, pretty easy access. The mountains that you can see around me here, the highest ones in this range are above 11,000 feet. There aren't any 12,000 foot peaks in the white clouds, but yet another spectacular central Idaho mountain range. I hope this video gave you some ideas of some places to go and things to do. There's amazing paddling and kayaking and, and rafting in this area. I saw people uh, whitewater kayaking, whitewater rafting, stand up paddle boarding. Uh, this part of Idaho is just a, an outdoor recreation hub, a hot spot. It's amazing. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I really did. I had a great time. I love this area. And uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what your favorite part was. I'm gonna hike back to the car and drive a handful of hours back home. I'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.